So there's this really cool kind of trick effect that you can do with an LCD or LED monitor where you remove the polarizing filter and then mount a polarizing filter into a pair of glasses. Very easy to do with some 3D glasses. That results in a monitor that looks like it just emits white and nothing else. But if you're wearing the right glasses, you can actually see what's on screen. Let's check it out. Ozone Gaming Strike Battle Keyboard is a 10 keyless compact keyboard with multiple Cherry MX switch variants, as well as 30 macro keys with five profiles. Check out the link in the video description to learn more. So this isn't an original Linus Tech Tips idea. This was posted by two different people about two years ago. On YouTube, it was posted by Bruss Pup, and on Instructables, it was posted by Demovi. And there's also two different methods of doing this. They both start with taking off the bezel of the monitor and then using a knife to cut a perimeter around the screen. It's very sketchy, but oh well. And then by chiseling off the polarizing filter, getting rid of the glue somehow with a solvent of some sort, and then and mounting a polarizing filter in a pair of glasses. Sounds pretty straightforward so far. The differentiating part is whether or not you buy some polarizing filters or reuse the polarizing filter off of your screen. Uh, buying them sounds like more of a sure shot, so I made sure that I had some before we started this, but we're gonna see which one works best. And we're gonna go through the whole process on camera. Okay, so first things first, I need to clear this area. I need to get my iFixit kit ready and my screwdriver because I have to tear the bezel off of this guy. I'm gonna remove the stand. Um, one interesting tidbit, uh, I've already kind of done this. I used a different monitor and it super didn't work. And you might be wondering why I would release this video if it like super failed once already. The problem there was there was a pre-existing crack on the monitor. So when I'm trying to pull off the polarizing filter, there's glue under there. The pre-existing crack spreads and I just ripped the whole thing in half. So hopefully that doesn't happen again. And if not, we'll probably be good. Uh, removing bezels on monitors kind of super sucks. I'm gonna do something that's not super visually appealing and use just a flat head to pry it off. Realistically, you're supposed to use a spudger, um, but I just bent the whole head off of one of mine because it wasn't really working properly. The problem with this guy, and the reason why it's gonna be pretty ugly, is it's metal and it doesn't give at all. It might be nice if you have something plastic so it can give a little bit. I might end up messing up some of the plastic here. So what I'm gonna do is start on the bottom. That way it's hopefully gonna be the least viewed part of the monitor. Yeah, see, look at this. My proper prying tools don't really seem to be surviving. I just <laughs> torqued the whole end off of that one. So, rip. I guess I'll go back to using my probably not gonna be as pretty, but screwdriver trick. I ended up starting on the top because the bottom was giving me too much trouble. So you can see the starting point is pretty rough actually. That's why I suggest maybe taking a little bit more time with it and using a more proper tool. And then from there on, it's not too bad. You'll just see little bumps here and there from the flathead, but it's not really the end of the world. I know people will care and it will bug me, so whatever. Okay. Bezel is hopefully off. What is going on down here? Oh dear. There's some cables going to the buttons. I was kind of hoping that these were just gonna be button plates and the actual button was gonna be under them and not on the bezel. That is not true. As you can see, the whole mechanism is in here and then it goes through a wire into the thing. So I'm not actually gonna be able to get this out, which super sucks. Oh. No, yeah, I'm not gonna be able to get it out, so I'm gonna have to get a support for it, and then I'll be able to work around it. One little tidbit that I recommend, uh, I learned from the last monitor that your initial perimeter cut is actually pretty important. Um, I would recommend a sturdier, hopefully bit sharper knife for the actual perimeter because you want a nice, clean cut. 
If that part makes it in the video, everyone's gonna scream at me for cutting towards myself. So right now, I'm just trying to connect the corners. So I cut four perimeter lines, but they don't necessarily completely match up, so I'm just trying to bridge them. Okay, so our perimeter lines have been cut. Um, we're mostly done with the nice big knife. Now what we need to do is try to get under those lines that we cut and start actually pulling up the polarizing filter. Now remember, there is glue under this entire thing. So while you can pull it up sometimes, you do really need to chisel under there and separate the polarizing filter from the actual panel. So the reason why you want a nice clean cut with probably a nicer knife around the perimeter is once you kind of get started with your chisel, as you go along the side, where you cut should just kind of come, oh, that part shouldn't go in the video. That's bad. Oh God. I was just commenting about how I shouldn't be cutting towards myself. So the reason why you want a nice clean cut with your probably sharper knife around the perimeter is so that when you're moving along with the chisel, uh, the perimeter actually comes up. So as you can see here, I'm pushing in and then sliding out, angling a little bit, pushing in again, and just moving along. And the perimeter should just kind of come up with my knife, which is actually quite helpful so that it keeps a clean edge. When you enter the first time with your chisel, it's probably gonna be a little bit messy, but once you start going, everything does get easier. Another helpful trick is to not necessarily pull the polarizing filter all the time and kinda, kinda rip it off, but hold it up so you can get your chisel under there more easily. Once you have some room like I do now, it's much easier to do this at the beginning. Obviously, that's not really gonna work. So I've, I've got this whole side off and I've got a bit of the top and a bit of the bottom off. It starts to go a lot faster. Now I will note this might not be the experience with every monitor. I do believe the amount of glue used on each monitor is definitely different. But with this one it is going quite a bit faster. Another thing that's helping me is the clean sharp cut that I got all the way around the monitor, um, which will feel super sketchy while you're doing it but it's actually totally fine, so don't worry about it. So up here, it started to break a few times. Um, uh, yeah, I don't really know what's going on with that. Probably something's wrong with the cut. I do notice there's some strand of something here. So what I might do is grab the knife that I originally did the perimeter with and kind of rerun this area a little bit just to make sure that it's actually okay. So this top bit, for me is pretty rough. I keep getting cracks constantly going down from the top, but my bottom line is super clean. So hopefully I'll have a lot of usable filter in kind of this area and I'll just have to ignore the top left, I guess. Almost, let go, come on, there we go. Okay, so there's our polarizing filter. We've got uh, kind of an ugly entry here where I started and then some big cuts up here which are pretty unfortunate. But I have a lot of usable space to cut out lenses to replace on here. Or there's the other method, which I'm also going to do, which is where we have purchased polarizing filters for like, I don't know, not that much off of Amazon. And we'll try each method, see which one's better. So just a note is that this stuff on the screen isn't actually slashes or cuts into the screen. This is all just glue residue. So I need to clean it up somehow. Hopefully I can use isopropyl alcohol because that's all I really have on hand. Um, but I know people have been using Gooby Gone, so we'll see what has happened there. Hey, do we have Gooby Gone? Do we have Gooby Gone? I have been using a shirt because the paper towel was leaving a whole bunch of crap behind, and I wouldn't recommend that if you actually ever want to wear the shirt again. So, just a note. Wow, okay, so yeah, using a proper thing that is designed for removing glue, probably a good idea. This is so much easier. So one thing I would recommend is making sure that you let your, whatever goo removal stuff you use, to sit for probably a while and then kind of 
pat it off and take it off nicely and then do it again and let it sit and do it again and let it sit and just keep on doing that to the point where you can fairly easily just wipe the glue off. Um, I, as you guys saw, used the chisel blade, which was recommended on a few guides online, saying that the blade definitely wouldn't scratch the monitor. But there are lines going along the monitor that you can see from just the edge of the knife. So a little bit disappointed in that. And yeah, try to make sure that your solvent solution does more of the work than you do, and I think you'll be fine. We're gonna call it quits there in terms of trying to touch up the panel. I'm gonna try to get this monitor back together. I knew those wires were gonna be a problem. All right. One thing, again, to take note of is you can do this with pretty much whatever panel you want, but I recommend going my route and buying some kind of cheap panel off some dude who's moving on Craigslist. Um, because it's not a perfect method, but we'll talk about that more later on. Now what we need to do is plug this guy in, make sure it's all white, which I'm sure it will be, and then check out the alignment for these filters so I can cut them into some glasses. Can you even see that, Brandon? <coughs> see what? Do you want to plug the Wancho computer in? Okay, so it works. Um, a kind of frustrating thing happened while we were going though. Nothing went wrong with the actual removal of the polarizing filter or anything, but it seems like the inverter on the monitor has whoop, died at some point in time. So if I shove this guy on here and change the source, you'll see it works, but then goes away almost immediately. So. We're gonna go through the rest of it. I'm gonna make some glasses. I'm gonna test some things, but pretty disappointed that the monitor died. So I'm gonna to have to kind of rotate, trying to turn this thing on, and then try to figure out what orientation these things need to go before I cut them. Oh, that's really close, yeah. Yeah, that's good. So now I know from just not letting go of it that this part needs to be going up. Use my lens that I popped out of my glasses earlier. Um, squish that kind of against the polarizing filter. And I'm gonna use a thin Sharpie to outline it. And then I'm just gonna cut on the inside of the outline and then it should work. Okay, so I've cut my filter. Now it's time to actually fit it into my pair of glasses. I think that works so far. I feel like a hipster not having one of my lenses there, but now I just need to fit one more of them and I think we'll be good. All right, so my glasses are set up and ready to go. Let's see if they actually work. There we go. All right, so the glasses do work. Um, sorry that the inverter is borked so you can't really see it all that well, but something I'm going to do is actually pass these to Brandon and then hold those over the lens. <laughs> We're going to do this live. And then I'm going to change the source and hopefully you guys will be able to see it better with that over the lens. Give me a moment. I'm going to have no idea when this works because I'm not actually going to be able to see it. Is that good? Okay. There we go. So, the project worked, the monitor didn't, but the inverter dying had nothing to do with what we did for the project. So poor old like 10 year old Flatron is, is going to have to be retired and recycled after this, but oh well. I would still recommend getting an old monitor. I just wouldn't necessarily recommend getting a very old monitor or one that you don't trust. I bought this one off Craigslist for 30 bucks or something and I only tested it for about two minutes two weeks ago and now fast forward two weeks the inverter's dead things are bad <sighs> another little bit that I have to say is while being able to remove the polarizing filter that was on the monitor and using it again is cool you also need to remove the anti-glare filter off of here and while it's possible by soaking it in hot water and then trying to peel it off like a sticker and stuff it's really annoying and the polarizing filters from Amazon are super cheap and work really well 
Uh, one thing to note on here is that they also have a film on it, a sticker-like substance, which is just supposed to protect them, but it's super easy to take off. So not nearly the same problem that we have with the anti-glare filter. Another thing is to goof off or gooby gone or whatever the heck paint thinner you end up using to remove your glue. Let it sit on there for a while, dry it off, let it sit again, dry it off, let it sit again. Do that a few times so that you don't have to scrape the glue off. It should come off much more evenly and you'll have a better time. I probably should have done that. But honestly, it wasn't that hard. It was sketchy. It feels very weird bringing a knife to a monitor screen. It doesn't feel natural. Um, but. Yeah, if you guys do it, please post it on the forum. I'd like to see your projects. Mac Weldon gear ranging from underwear to undershirts, t-shirts, socks, sweats, and they're really easy to order. And honestly, they're really easy to wear too. I mean, their boxers are literally cradling my man parts as we speak, yeah. and they do a great job of it. Something that's pretty great is that their products are naturally anti-microbial, but especially the Pima cotton with silver XT2 ones. So I swear to my girlfriend, if you're watching this, uh, these were clean before I put them on. But you, in the audience, should run an experiment where you get the silver ones and see how long you can wear them until they, you know, like actually smell. For science! Anyways, by the way, if you hit up the MacWeldon.com website and use the promo code Linus, you get 20% off. So, I don't know. Check it out. Thanks for watching, guys. If you dislike the video because you're like, wow, the project didn't really fully work because the inverter died, be sure to press the dislike button. If you liked the project because it kind of sort of worked at the same time, press the like button, get subscribed, favorite, share, all that fun stuff. Go on Amazon, use our Amazon affiliate code, uh, buy some of our shirts in the link in the video description down below, or become a contributor on the forum. If you want to see other crazy projects, there's the conclusion to my Fallout build, which definitely falls under the category of crazy projects. So click up here to watch that.